<laughs> I absolutely love that. You live, Jamie? I loved it. Yeah. You know what? That was that was good. My heart rate, 174, pushing, hurting, struggling like the rest of us, except you, Kito. I know that you were you, you do that for fun, mate. But uh, I think my drink it was great. Good mm. session, girl. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes, you nailed it. You nailed it. Really, really enjoyed that. Oh, oh God. What's my heart right now? Oh, gosh. It's just on it. Okay, Jimmy, I know we've got um, a question of the mad woman herself, Carol. <laughs> but she wants to ask you a question, so I thought start with her, as uh, she just killed us. <laughs> Kettle. I loved it, by the way. Really loved it. I did a question again to Jimmy. What's the question you'd like to ask uh, Jimmy? The first question I wanted to ask you was, what type of training do you do now after? Okay, it's a good question. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I, uh, I train with Colin Jackson, you know, the uh, world record holder still there, uh, Sprint Hurdler. He used to be my coach. Uh, we're very good friends. So uh, I managed to do uh, online class and just me and him and a friend so I'm doing that about four or five days a week uh, five six days a week actually and I do um four sessions of yoga a week so it's not all about hitting it hard it's about chilling out in your mind I'm 47 now so I'm not a spring chicken anymore and I go on a fasted walk every day for five kilometers um before breakfast um I find it clears my mind and it's just brilliant you know before most people are waking up in the morning, I've already done 5K walking. I don't jog at all, don't run at all anymore. So yeah, it's brilliant. And sessions like yours, which absolutely kill me by the way, but I loved it. I actually love that feeling of, you know, pushing your body, sweating it out and, you know, and it's all before nine o'clock. It's brilliant. So thank you. Okay, good question. Um, please have a question I'd ask and then I'd do spot to Claire Williams, I can do a mute to the great. That's a thing, Claire. Hiya, hiya, Jamie, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Brilliant. Um, how did you keep motivated with diet, nutrition, and training? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it's, you know, like all of you guys on this, on this call, really, like fitness is brilliant, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's, it's before nine o'clock, you've all worked out hard and you feel great. So the last thing you want to do now is have a bacon sandwich on a white bread piece of toast with tomato sauce. You know, it'd, it'd be great, but all you're doing is undoing the goodness you've just done. So for me, actually, the older I've got, the more mindful I've been of eating. I mean, when I was 20, 21, I was 23 at the Olympics. I could eat as many Haribo sweets as I wanted. I could do whatever I wanted to do because I'd burn it off. But now it's all about health, nutrition. Um, I'm a pescatarian, so I don't eat sort of like chicken or beef or anything like that anymore I stopped in January uh, I have five six hours a, a night sleep and I wake up like this I'm just I feel so good you know I'm not saying not to eat meat because everyone you know a lot of people do but for me my partner's a vegan and it just made sense to to part food with you know part, part company with a with a meat so um absolutely love it so for me it's just part of the daily course I mean the other day I had um I had some chips with um, fishing batter and all that and it, it was okay but you know I, I prefer the nice foods these days it's you know maybe my age but I love sort of like lentils I love uh, fresh fresh vegetables and whatnot so yeah hummus love hummus you know it's it's, it's great avocado all those sort of superfoods okay thank you Jamie no problem oh, Claire. Jamie can I just touch on when you mentioned um, your partners if you can yes that helps a lot to be somebody in the same household as you is into the health, fitness, and nutrition as well. That makes a big difference because on the days where you're having a little bit of a wobble, your partner is there to help you lift you up again. So I think that's essential. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, you know, if you haven't got that set up, then you know, yes, it can be quite difficult because it's not you're on your own. But yeah, if you've got somebody else who's in the game with you, like for example, you know, I do a lot of my fasted walks with Cheryl um, in the mornings. And it's always good to have a, a sang board, you know, you can talk to a friend to talk to. Um, so if you can, like my, my partner was a vegan for four or five years before I even sort of stopped eating meat. 
uh, or, you know, the basic meats. And uh, it would just become awkward for her to cook for me and her to cook for herself. And I just thought, you know, I want to do this. I want to see what it's like. And she thought I was just going to be a, a vegetarian from January to February. And then it came to February the second or third. And she said, oh, I thought you'd have a piece of chicken or something. I said, what do you mean? I said, I've given up meat. She went, I thought it was just for a month. <laughs> so, and, you know, for me, I can only speak for me. As soon as I gave it up, I feel so good. I feel, you know, I'm not one of these advocates. Oh, give up meat. Give up. I'm not that at all. But I can only speak for myself. I feel amazing. But if you have got a partner you can work with, it always helps. Okay, do you question that actually, Jimmy, go in? They're all shy. All shy. I love it. They're all... Uh, we've got a question from Lisa Davis. Is that okay? Yeah, Lisa Davis. Okay, um, hi Jamie. Hi. Hiya. Um, of all the athletes you've ever trained with, who's the hardest worker? And you can include yourself in the answer. Okay, um, myself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not even playing like I'm five foot eight I'm from Wales I used to train with Colin Jackson Linford Christie Frankie Fredericks Darren Campbell John Regis everyone in the group was an either Olympic bronze medalist at the worst right through to Olympic gold medalist so every day was like being at the Olympics um I was the only 400 meter runner in the group um and the reason I say I was five foot eight I'm like Law Farquhar from Shrek do you know what I mean I'm the <laughs> <laughs> running like this and everyone else is just running so I for me to to get a world medal and an Olympic uh, medal I had to rinse out every ounce of my talent you know um, somebody like Darren Campbell was so supremely talented a lot more talented than I was um, Frankie Fredericks most probably the, from Namibia 200 meter runner most probably the most talented runner in the training group itself um, he used to run, he ran more sub 10 second runs for the 100 meters than any other human being ever at the time. Obviously, Usain Bolt surpassed that afterwards. But yeah, if you chat to Limford, Colin, anyone, you say, who's the craziest guy we used to train with? It would be me. And if, if the television cameras would turn up, let's just say the BBC turned up at a training session, they'd all go, oh no, the BBC's turned up. Jamie's going to train even harder because I'd always show up. <laughs> I know you used to hate it. So, uh, it, it, you know, I'm not to say it was me, just to say, but it was, yeah, I don't know anyone who used to, I used to be crazy, you know, so uh, um, I'm too old to be crazy these days. Thank you. I've Nos Williams, you've got a question, Ryan. I'll say, we've been here, sorry, see Nos. Hi, Jamie, good morning. Good morning. Um, as a child, um, trying to train and making a way up through the ranks of the athletics world. Yeah. Who was your sporting idol? Who did you look up to? Um, for me, it was Colin, Colin Jackson. Um, he's Colin is 53 years old. And if you see him, he's got abs, he's ripped up, he looks 35. He's unbelievable. Like, he's been an inspiration to me since I was 12. And um, so I think Colin, and because he's from Wales as well, but me being a 70s child, I was born in 1973. It was Daley Thompson when I was a really young boy. I mean, 80 Olympics, 84 Olympics was when I really remember him. I mean, everyone used to play track and field, Daley Thompson track and field. You know, everyone used to play that if you're in, you know, my sort of age group. Uh, and it's really funny when you grow up idolizing these people and then the next thing you know, they're your mates. You know, like Daley texts me the other week, Colin's on the phone to me every day. And it's so weird to, to you know idolize these people and they become your friends and they become just you know we're all normal human beings and um yeah so i think daily would have been the big one and then colin obviously because i was close to him when i when i grew up yeah so okay. it's all good um, we've got another question uh gwen roberts hi gwen can't boil it Good morning, Colin. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. I'm joking. I'm joking. I was yeah, uh, yeah, no, you wondering. Um, 
No, no. I was just wondering what bit of advice you had when you were younger and competing that you still keep in your head now when you're training. Um, just don't give up. I mean, I used to, I never used to give up. I mean, just then in that circuit, I was all out on round one. You know I, mean? I was, I was knocked out on round one. And I was like going, oh my God, I've got another like two rounds of this. But, you know, it's, it's the fight is, it's you against you, you know, it's, you know, why are you on this before nine o'clock? What are you trying to achieve? It's no Olympics at the end of it. You know, you're doing it to become fit and healthy for you. So when you, you know, you get go to bed at night, you can look at your day and go, what have I done today? Well, I started off starting off in a great way by doing my circuits. So, I mean, it's nothing like I, I've lost, not that I was big last year because I was in decent shape. Gito knows I've, I've always been in decent shape, but I've lost 10 kg in body fat in the last year. Wow. You know, which is nuts. Like, you know, I, I weigh the same as I weighed in the 1996 Olympic Games and I'm 47 now. So it's achievable. And it's not because I'm ultra, I'm not ultra fit. I'm not ultra crazy on the fitness. I train with Colin for 25 minutes, six day a week. And then I do an hour yoga session four days a week and a morning walk. And that's it. And I just eat well. It's all about what you do in the kitchen. Um, as you all know, and I'm not religious where it's got to be portion controlled. I'll eat whatever I want to eat to a degree. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all about what, what motivates me is I want to be the best version of myself. You know, if I can look in the mirror and go, you know what? I feel good about myself. It's not about anyone else. Cause you're always going to get people putting you down. You're always going to get people who are disappointed and I don't really care for others really as in, you know, if I know I'm doing the best I can do. Um, nobody can really say anything to me because I know I'm not cheating myself. You know, I'm, I'm doing the best. You know, it's loads of people better than me out there and, and that's fine. You know, as long as I'm as good as I can be, that's what it's all about, really. Oh, lovely, Jamie. Thank you. No problem. Well, do you know who that's? Yeah, we've got Sean Roberts. Hi, Sean. Hi, Jamie. Okay. Hey. Hey. Um, I was just wondering, since the lockdown now, I've been doing exercise every day now, and every day I'm waking up very stiff. I was wondering, what, what do you do to be stiffness every day? Um, yeah, that's, that's, it's, it's hard, you know, what you need to have sort of like hot baths with maybe some Epsom salts. Um, um, you know, I, I'm always using West Lab salts. You know, if you saw my bathroom, I just got loads of West Lab salts and I have, uh, uh, you know, bath salts. Um, drinking a lot of water is really important. Um, so, you know, you've got to drink a lot. Maybe you're not drinking enough water. But you know what I said? I think I said it on my Instagram yesterday. It's, you know, we're all a little bit older now. We're not, you know, we're not 18 and all that. And we do get a bit stiffer and whatnot. It's every now and then have a really easy day. You know, you don't need to keep pushing and pushing and pushing because what will happen, you'll hurt yourself. And it's really important to look after yourself. And it's important to know when to stop or when to have a day off. And actually just even having a day off and, you know, having, you know, a glass of wine, a red wine, watching your favorite movie, like the holiday or something like that, whatever it is, you know, watching something like that. That's important too, because then when you go back to training on a Monday, back to one of these circuit sessions at half eight, You've had your day off, your mind's fresh, you feel comfortable, you feel happy, you're back in the game. So it's very important to not keep going, I've got to do it, I must, oh, I, I, and, and, and don't feel that if you have a day off, oh, I've cheated myself. No, you know, you chat to any athlete of sort of my caliber who's done it, they'll all say rest is as good as anything. You've got to have, you've got to know when to stop now and then. Um, and, and that's important. So drink lots of water, lots of fluid, and maybe have a day off here and there, have Epsom salts baths, um, and, and, and relax now and then. Okay, great, have thanks. A massage. Have a massage, get, a ma get down the local, and get the massage, get the IT pan, oh, it hurts, but it's good. good you. <laughs> great, thanks. <laughs> no problem. Go. Uh, question, Dylan? Dylan? Come off mute, is it? Delantinat, if you're right, I'm new. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Hi, Jamie, sorry about that. Um, 
Yeah, just a bit of a hypothetical question, really, going back to the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, I just want to know, if you hadn't have done the 400 metres, what event would you have liked to have competed in and why? Well, here's my Olympic medal. <laughs> I, I thought I'd get out. It's, I tell you, this, this medal, just talking about this Olympic medal, and I'll tell you a story about it in a minute. It's like the older I'm getting, the more important this Olympic medal gets. If me and you were in front of each other now and I went like that, you'd be like, oh my God, sod Jamie Boss, let me have the medal. It's, like, it's great, the older I've got. Um, so I started off being a 100 and 200 meter runner. Um, and then when Colin coached me in 95, 90, late 94, 95, he was coaching me for the 100 and 200 meters. Um, and I accidentally got into running a 400 meters. I, I weren't meant to do it. I just ran in this British league in Cardiff, a local small meeting in a relay. And the British national coach for sprints said to me, if you run a really good relay leg in this just really small meeting, it was nobody there, it was like a small, he said, we may consider you to run you in the European Championships. I was like, all right. Anyway, I ran really fast. I ran around 45 flat relay split against no one. I pretty much ran it on my own. And everyone's like, oh my God. And, and off the back end of that, I got, I represented Great Britain in the uh, British under 23s down in France in Narbonne. And I ended up breaking the Welsh record and I ran in my third race, beat Roger Black and it was crazy. So it just went from, you know, not meant to be doing it to suddenly doing it. And a year later, that's when I got this. Um, so it all happened very quickly. But my dad, me and my dad always say, if it could have been uh, a race for me, would have been the 300 metres because that 400 was a bit too far. But I think I could have done really well over the 800 metres. Um, I think, you know, I had the heart endurance. Like I said, I trained harder than anyone else. I know I was crazy. I would, I was like the Duracell bunny. You know what I mean? When, when everyone fell over, I just, just saw you going like this. It was just nuts. I, I, I don't know what it was. I it just natural stamina or whatever, but um, determination. So yeah, maybe the 800 meters might have been the actual race for me, you know? That's Brilliant. It. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers and Dad, question yeah. Dad. Um, can I ask a question, Jamie, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I've known you, obviously I've known you for years now and I've never asked you this question before. If um, you weren't the super athlete you were, what job would you have done? Oof. It's a good question. Um, I, t I tell you what I would have loved to have done in sport, being Welsh, um, I would have loved to have played rugby for Wales. Um, I love rugby. Um, I played touch rugby for Wales um, in my older years. Um, we won the European Champs, which is kind of cool, beating England in the final, so that was great. Um, I would have loved to have played rugby. Um, I know a lot of the old team. I know a lot of the current team. Um, and I, you, you know, you know, most of you may have been to the uh, Principality Stadium, 74,000 people in there. Everyone's singing the Welsh National Anthem. You've got the red shirt on. You know, it's the epitome of, of heart of Wales. And I'm very passionate about Wales. I love Wales. So I think rugby would have been the sport. Um, one of my favourite competitions I ever ran in is the Commonwealth Games. And the reason I love that is because I was representing Wales and not Great Britain. Um, so I would actually say that may have been my fit more favorite competitions in the Olympics, but if it wasn't sport at all, it would have been in sort of some sort of design capacity. Cause I went to college and I studied design and the, the job I've got now, I do lots of, um, artwork and framing and I, I lo I'm very visual, you know? Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, it would have been some sort of, my dad's an architect. And I worked for him for a number of years, a couple of years while I was up and coming. And in fact, it's a local house 10 miles from where I live now, which I designed and I can't, which I designed what, 25 years ago. And I can't believe it hadn't fallen down. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm quite chuffed to that. <laughs> so yeah, design, some sort of design. Great, thanks. Question I'd ask anyone? Got a question from the chat from Donna. And it says, uh, Jamie, which race did you enjoy the most and which was the toughest? Oh, that's a good one. Um, okay, so the, 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 the one I, I suppose I enjoyed the most, and Gito, you've heard me say this story many a times at the body holiday before. Um, so I'm gonna, it's, it'll take me a couple of minutes to say it if we've got time. I don't know how much time we've got, but um, it'll take me like two, three minutes to really go through it. Anyway, cut long story short. So 
it's nothing like when you get to represent Great Britain in the Olympics and you get the letter through the door saying, Jamie Balty, you accordingly invite to the Olympic Games to represent Great Britain in the 4x4 relay. And, you know, that was an amazing moment in my life to, to get the letter, to make the team. And I was representing Great Britain in the 4 by 400 meter relay. Um, it was Roger Black, Mark Richardson and Ewan Thomas from Wales and myself from Wales, which is great. And um, we made it to the final and the, um, we were in lane five and the American team were in lane four. And the 1996 Olympic Games were in America. So it was a very big American crowd and big British crowd, actually, because they support athletics a lot. So you can imagine I'm nervous because it's the Olympic final. It's my first Olympics. And, you know, it's the biggest pinnacle of all sport, really, uh, the Olympics. And uh, the gun goes and it's you and Thomas on first leg. I'm on second leg. Mark Richardson on third leg. Roger Black on fourth leg. So mm. I'm going to stand back a bit and I'm going to do a little demonstration. So I, you, you and Thomas now he's running around the track like this, going around the track. And he's going around the, uh, the full track. And, uh, and I'm nervous and I'm going, oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh my God, don't mess this up, don't mess this up. And I take the relay baton off him. And like I said, um, we were in lane five and the American team were in lane four. So I'm running around the first curve like this in the Olympic final, going around the first bend. The American guy has the audacity in the cheek to, as he, run, he runs past me on the inside lane, and as he runs past me in the Olympic final, he goes, oh yeah, baby, oh yeah, baby. And I thought, you cheeky bugger, like, <laughs> How can somebody speak to you in the Olympic final as you're running? So he went all the way around the, back, uh, around the first curve like this. And we had 300 metres to go, the back straight. And I thought, you can't disrespect the Welsh like that. So I'm going to get you, right? So I ran as fast as I could. I ran past him. As I ran past him, I ran, meet me, like Roadrunner. And you should have seen his face when I went past the guy. So I meet him like that, meet me like that, went flying past him. The crowd went ballistic because I went past the American in America, in Atlanta. The crowd, 100,000 people watching it in the, in the stadium. Crazy times. Handed the bat baton over to Mark Richardson. Tied up the home straight. So the guy went past me up the home straight. Gave it to Mark. Mark gave it to Roger. And we lost um, the Olympic final by about that much. And that's where I got this, this medal. Um, and I'm really proud because that day we broke the British record, European record and Commonwealth record, which was 24 years ago now. And we still hold the British, European and Commonwealth record 24 years later. So it just shows you how fast we were. And I'll, I'll finish on this one, a, a story which you'll, you'll love if, if I got to realize. It. But I, um, when you go to the Olympics, you go, you, when you get your medals, you go on a thing called the rostrum, right? The medal ceremony. So we're, I don't know if you can see me because I can't see myself in the screen here, but if you can see me, right? So we're, we, we're on the rostrum now. They say in first, in, in third place, you have Jamaica and everyone's going like that, Jamaicans going like that. Then in, in second place, Grand Britannia, Great Britain, like that. And in first place, we have uh, America and everyone's like this. So, so you, that day we got this, the, the medal. So this really important person puts a medal around your neck and... I shook the person's hand. I was oh, brilliant. This is lovely, like, you know? But also, when you go to the Olympics, you also get a beautiful lady, right, who um, gives the flowers out. You'll see it. You'll see the flower lady, right? She gives flowers as you get your medal. So we're on the rostrum now, like this. We're on the rostrum. At this point, the flag's going up for America. Na, 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 na. Like, right? All the seriousness. People crying, tears in their eyes. Anyway, you and Thomas nudges me like this. And, and I looked at him as the, as, the, as, the, uh, as the flag's going up. And he said, oh, my God, I really fancy the flower lady. I went, <laughs> well, hang on, mate. <laughs> I said, yeah, she's beautiful, but the flag's going up. How can you be focusing on the woman right now? I said, what are you doing? And then he went like this. He went, he had the medal around his neck. And he, he looked at the girl. He goes, hey, girl, how about me and you tonight? And, and she was like, what? And he goes, I've got one of these. <laughs> I've got leverage, right? So what he didn't realize was a massive microphone above his head and everything he was saying on the rostrum was getting transported onto the BBC on your televisions. We get off the rostrum, we walk away like this, mobile phone goes off in his pocket, hello, and it says Mrs. on the other end of the phone. They ended up splitting up after that race. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> so, you know, you can have an Olympic medal one day and you can come down the next. So uh, if anyone get an Olympic medal, just ignore the flower lady, all right? Because it's uh, they have handsome flower men now. It's very PC these days, but uh, yeah, it was all good. So uh, yeah, it's a funny moment in my athletics career. So maybe that was the best and the funniest. <coughs> Thanks, Jamie. Um, another question from the chat um, from YouTube. I noticed you were monitoring your heart rate. Which smart or fitness watch do you use slash recommend? Um, I'm, I'm all over the Apple watch. I'm just, I'm appled out. I've got a MacBook Pro here. I'm just, they, they sold it to, you know what I mean? I'm in, I'm in. Once you're in Apple, it's hard to get out in it. So, uh, yeah, I, I find this really works for me. I don't use it religiously as a, um, I not like, oh, you know, I do monitor all my sessions, so I'm not lying on that. So I will start and stop it. If I go for a walk, I'll start and stop it. And I, I don't start and stop it to go, oh, have I gone faster on this walk? I hope I have. I'm not like that. I just do it just to monitor what I'm doing more than being religious and trying to beat myself all the time. I don't believe in trying to beat yourself all the time not at my age 47 like I'm almost 50 you know those days are done you know I want I want to enjoy what I do now I want to be looking around I've, I've done that I've murdered myself for years and it's all about taking it easy so yeah the apple works for me um I love it um and yeah I love their products it's yeah great brand how are you for time Jim are you okay for I'm maybe not, yeah, yeah I'm fine yeah yeah I'm all good I'll be now well, you guys all in lockdown. It's great. How good is lockdown, huh? I love it. Like, okay, let me just say this. I wouldn't say this out to everyone. And I do, I'm very lucky, I suppose, that my oldest son's 24. My youngest is 17. My oldest um, has left uh, home, you know, a while ago. My youngest is with my ex-partner. I have him normally 50% of the time, but he's been with his mum uh, for a while. Um, which So that's very sad. Um, no, I haven't seen him. Um, I've seen him once, actually, but I'm on Zoom all the time with him and on the phone. But um, I love the way that life has slowed down right now. Uh, I know it's difficult if you've got kids at home and you're confined. You know, I understand that. And I sympathize to that because it is kind of difficult then. But I just love the fact that, you know, we're not rushing around anywhere anymore. I mean, I think it's going to be a new world right now. So when you say, am I, am I rushing for time? You've got me all day. <laughs> you didn't realize you lot to do you didn't realize i'm here all day you're not leaving i'm gonna check if anyone leaves <laughs> I'm, I'm only playing but no i you know it's no rest so whatever okay thank you any question i ask um yeah, no, it's, it's, you know what, like, it's great what you guys are doing. I mean, I think sport is brilliant. I think, I think, you know, you've, you, you're getting up, you're getting on a session. It's, I, I actually, I train with Colin about six o'clock in the evening or maybe 8.30 at night because one of the guys is working. But I actually love getting a morning session in. I, I've done a 5K walk already. I've done the session with you already. It's done. I'm done for the day. Oh, it so happens I'm going to be training with Colin later and doing a yoga session. So it's quite full on today. But I think these sessions in the morning are really good. Um, I like I like getting stuff done. Um, I like the rest of the day to be able to look back and go, I've done what I've needed to do. The heart rate was up 174, you know, 20 minutes hit. You know, I, I think it's great. And I think you guys all being on, on doing these sessions with these guys I mean, it's brilliant, you know. I thought that session was fantastic earlier on. You know, a, a lot of people who don't train, they think it's so hard. They, 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 they just go, oh, yeah, it's easy for you. I'm like, what do you mean it's easy for me, you know? It's not easy for anyone as such, you know, but you've got to put, you, you've got to be in it to win it. And, and you guys are in it. And, and, you know, I think it's brilliant. You know, we, we, we all want to be better versions of ourselves and, you know, just to get that training in, it doesn't, you don't need to be in the gym for four hours. You don't need to be, you know, having, you know, two, you know, a tiny little bit of pasta and a little bit, you know, you, you know, you just got to sort of, um, if you haven't got to be so full on with it, you know, you're, you're in these sessions and you, you know, you're already, you're all, obviously all doing well for yourself to get up and do it. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really chuffed for you. I love it. And I'm glad you do. Yeah. Is there any question? Any question I'd ask you, Governor Jamie? Then um, there's no other questions. We, we'll have a. 
last word of wisdom from Jamie, and then um, we'll call it tomorrow morning. Yeah, Jamie, you got uh, words of wisdom for the group, so we can leave on a positive note. Yeah, just, uh, just, I, I think, just keeping the game. You're doing the right thing already. You're on, you're on, you're in this session. You've, you've got some serious experts up there in North Wales. Uh, I really enjoyed the session today. Um, I, I thought it was fantastic. I can see you've got a good setup up there. Um, I know, obviously, I know you well. I've known you for a long time, and I know you're in safe hands with this man. You know, um, it's. It's great. I, I feel privileged to be on it, if I'm honest. You know what I mean? I feel, you know, thanks for asking me to come on. And, you know, it hasn't, it's been very enjoyable. It's been nice chatting stories and it's been nice sharing a bit of fitness with you lot. So I'm sure I'll be on it again one day. I know you're going to collar me. So like, and I love it. It's not even a collar. And I'll be like, I'm there. I'm coming. I'm doing it. You know, I love, I love sport. You know, the endorphins are flying. I don't feel tired. I feel really alert. So yeah, you're all doing the right thing. Keep it up. Enjoy. Drink loads of water. Get the Epsom salts bath. Have a rest day if you need it. Don't keep pushing to think that you're letting yourself down if you don't. Um, it's all about enjoyment at the end of the day. And if you can smile in what you're doing, you do it better. So enjoy. Great. Thanks, Jamie. And probably all the group are very appreciative of you coming and joining us this morning. I mean, no, uh, Carol, you're a great team, then Tosper, brilliant. Thanks, Carol, for the great class. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.